Welcome to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast, where you will learn how to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, finance, turn around and operate mobile home parks. And now, here is your host, the fifth largest mobile home park owner in the United States, Frank Rolfe. Webster's Dictionary defines embezzlement as theft or misappropriation of funds placed in one's trust or belonging to one's employer. This is Frank Roth, the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. We're going to talk about misappropriation of funds by managers, but in new and profoundly different ways. Because in the olden days in the mobile home park business, the number one way that you saw a manager steal from the property owner was by taking cash. I know when I bought my first mobile home park, Glen Haven, down in Dallas, Texas, the way it worked was this. The manager was tasked with bringing in all the money every month in cash, paying all the bills themselves out of those deposits, and then sending the owner of the property a check for the difference. So what you had is a situation where the manager controlled all the money coming in, all the money going out, and you know that the amount that was sent to that owner was never even remotely what it should have been. I knew when looking over the books of Glen Haven and looking over what the park was actually producing versus what the seller thought it was producing, there was a very wide margin. And of course, we all know where that money went. The manager took it in in cash and pocketed a great amount of it. So many park owners thought the way you would beat embezzlement going forward would be to eliminate cash. So many years ago, people stopped taking rent in cash. Now, you can't stop taking rent in cash in every state. In many states, you are required to give people the option to pay in cash. But then again, paying in cash has its own risk for the customer because then there's much less record of payment than if you use a check or money order. So many parks today are on a check and money order only basis, or they've moved on to ACH. In our portfolio, about 92% of all payments come in under ACH, which means it's automatically debited out of an account. So then, if you take cash out of the equation on revenue coming in, does that eliminate the risk of embezzlement by managers? And the answer is no. They just became more clever. So today, the problem is that the embezzlement scams that some managers utilize are so sophisticated, and the numbers are so much larger in scale, it makes you look back longingly to the days of when the park took the rent in cash. So what are the three worst of these new embezzlement scams that you need to guard against, and then how do you solve those? Well, this first one is very, very clever. Here's how it works. Let's say you've got a park-owned home, whether it's a rental or one that you're going to sell, and it's sitting there, and you're supposed to be running ads and showing the home and trying to find a customer. And if you're selling it the customer, then to be vetted through a lender like PEP, and then approved, and then the customer moves in, or if it's a rental, then once again, they would be vetted, and they would sign a lease, and then they would move in. But your manager has a more creative concept, because he realizes that that is a marketable property that you won't really know the start date on. So somebody comes in, and they say, hey, I'm interested. I saw that rental you have in the paper, or the sign out on the fence, and they say, ah, yes, we do have that, and uh, it's uh, $800 a month, And you can move in right now. And what they do is they don't tell you, the owner, that someone's living in the home. So if they can get away with that for two or three months, they're going to pocket a few thousand bucks. It's an excellent scam. Very, very creative. And of course, if they got caught, they'll say, oh, well, the the person must have just moved in a, a day or so ago. They must have moved in early, hoping that you will brush it aside, not yourself really knowing what the start date was. And of course, they can very conveniently have the person have a lease with a start date at some point in the future. They'll never even catch that in the document. So you hear you have an issue that can create for many managers a lot more money than they could just embezzling cash because every single home, let's say you've got three rental homes and they can scam you that those three are vacant when they're all occupied. And let's assume the rent's 800 a month. They're making $2,400 a month with absolutely no cost out of their pocket whatsoever. So how do you stop that scam? Because gosh, that's a good one. Well, what you got to do is you have to know that that scam is ever present. And one good tool to fight that is what we call a FaceTime audit. Now, how's a FaceTime audit work? It's very simple. Just call your manager, say, put me on FaceTime on their smartphone, and then just tell them to walk over to the home and give you a tour. 
Now, if they already have someone living in that home, that's a problem, right? Because if they go over to that home, there'll be furniture in it, posters on the walls, car in the driveway, probably person in the house. Very hard to explain, and they will never be able to explain away all that furniture and stuff that's in there. So now you caught them. Now you ruined it. So it's a very good idea to start doing regular random audits of those vacant homes to truly see that they're vacant. Now, you don't have to travel out there. Don't have to jump in your car to go out and do these inspections. You see, the smartphone does all that for you. All you have to do is consistently just have a FaceTime audit. Just have the manager turn on their phone and take you over to the house. And I guarantee you, if the first time you tell them this plan, if you call them up and say, hey, put me on FaceTime, oh, okay, and now walk over to the empty homes we have and give me a tour. And if they won't do it, if they say, oh, I can't, I hurt my leg, or oh, I can't, I, I have to go to the dentist, then that's what they're probably doing. Because nobody who's played it straight up and not cheating would have any problem turning you on FaceTime and walking over there. Another big scam, and this has been going on for a long time, is vendor collusion. Now, in the vendor collusion scam, here's what happens. You got a plumbing company, and the manager calls you up one day and says, hey, uh, we got a problem in the park. We've got a major water sewer backup thing kind of going on. And, oh, it's just terrible. The city's been out here, and they said they're going to shut our water off if we don't get it fixed by 5 o'clock. And I know we got to move quickly. So I called this plumbing company, and they said, hey, we can start it up. We can get it going, but it's going to cost about $7,000. But I don't see any other option, Mr. Owner. What do you think? Then you say, oh, gosh, well, I don't want to have my water turned off. I don't want to be on the news, so I, I guess let's go ahead and do it. And then later you get a bill for $7,000 from ABC Plumbing or whatever the name is. And you send them the $7,000. And what do they do? They take $3,500 down to your manager's commission. Because there never really was any kind of sewer or water issue. There never really was any fixing of it since there wasn't really a problem. It was just a quick way to scam you out of a large amount of money. Now, we see that typically, it was frequently in the plumbing business. I don't know what it is with plumbers as opposed to other tradesmen. I don't know why it's not normally electricians, but it always seems to revolve around plumbers. And how do you guard against that scam? Obviously, not only a very expensive scam, but one that could make you make very bad decisions on the future of the park. You might replace the water or sewer system because you had so many repeated big capital calls, not realizing all of them are fabricated. So what do you do? Well, again, it's kind of like the person who's renting out homes You've got to put a great microscope over exactly what is going on. When a manager calls you today with some kind of problem, water sewer issue, you want to see it. You want to say, put me on FaceTime. Let me see what you got talking about here. At a minimum, they should take photos and text you a million photos or videos or what is going on to show you that, that, that there is a problem. Number two, you got to get three bids. Those kind of scams always revolve around having one dominant plumber that you get lazy with and don't constantly get other opinions. You've got to get at least two bids on a major project like that just to make sure that it is a major product. Because if they have a scam going on, they won't be able to get that second bid. The other plumber will say, I can't give you a price. There's nothing wrong with that thing. Number three, you have to follow along with it continuously. It's not enough just to see the problem. You want to see additional action pictures or FaceTime of them digging it, what the problem truly is, them patching it, and then them burying it. And then finally, if it happens in a recurring basis, you need to get a different plumber. It's strange how some parts can have no plumbing issues at all, and then suddenly frequent big issues. And you know what's really going on. There's a collusion going on with the manager and the plumber, and they're fabricating these, and they can't help themselves because, gosh darn it, the manager thinks the money is a lot of fun to have around. Finally, another big one right now is where people collect up parts for the mobile home park as the manager's role, and then they sell them on eBay or even in yard sales. So here's how it works. They say, oh yeah, well, we, we broke another chainsaw, need another chainsaw, and then not long after that, oh, gosh darn it, we're doing so much chopping of the trees with the chainsaw, we broke another one, we need another one. And what really happened was there was nothing going on with the chainsaw. All they did, in fact, was they just got three chainsaws and then sold three chainsaws on eBay for $250 a chainsaw. So how do you battle that scam? How do you battle the person who collects in parts and then sells them again on a website or even throwing them on a, a sheet in their yard as a yard sale? Well, it, it's a good idea to use a company called Purchasing Platform. We use it. All the large operators use it, but everyone can use it, even if you just own one mobile home park. 
Now, one of the big benefits of purchasing platform is it tracks everything exactly where it goes. And it can tell you how many parts were purchased by any certain park, as well as what homes they are related to. And you can start seeing unusual high flows of tools and parts to homes. And as a result, you can start seeing managers who have gone bad. They've gone from not having many parts at all to having lots of them. And then suddenly, once again, you'd have to say, wait a minute, I'm putting the brakes on this. This seems really, really odd. You might call them out on it and say, hey, I see we've gone through an enormously high number of chainsaws. Let's, let's do a FaceTime audit. Show me your chainsaw collection. Show me that recent chainsaw that you have going on. Again, it's like the old Ronald Reagan concept of trust but verify. The problem is too many park owners trust, but they don't verify. Trusting without verification leads to such issues as embezzlement. But you have to remember that you can't let your guard down for a minute because even though you don't take cash today, that's not going to stop the manager from doing very creative stunts for self-enrichment. This is Frank Roth, the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Mobile Home Park Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at mhpmastery.com to subscribe to the show, read our show transcriptions, and access all of our great information on mobile home park investing.